Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're following up on the Scion 2 printer and what we're going to do with this episode is convert this from running off this massive power brick or its six cell NICAD battery pack, which I don't actually have, to running on USB-C and a lithium ion battery to retain its portability. The technique I'm using can be applied to almost any low power device. And if you haven't seen the video for the printer itself, have a look here. Because the Cyan 2 printer already is capable of running on batteries, this is a very straightforward conversion. Before we get started, a word of warning. Doing this requires some skill with a soldering iron. I mean, not that much, I managed it. But soldering irons are inherently dangerous as they get very hot, as are the power tools you'll need because you're going to need a Dremel or a drill or something similar. And in addition, lithium ion batteries themselves have the potential to explode. I accept literally no responsibility at all for you, your belongings, your house, your pets or anything else. In fact, I accept no liability for anything you do follow in this video. This is for demonstration purposes only. And with that out of the way, let's get cracking. So to do this modification, you're going to need a few things. Starting with a USB-C charging circuit, preferably with charge over and under protection on it. You're also going to need a DC to DC converter. This one is a variable converter and that's because I couldn't find any that went directly to 7.2 volts. So this one goes anywhere between 3 and 12 volts. You're also going to need a battery. I think you can guess where that one has come from. You're going to want a file for tidying up. You're going to need some foam pads for sticking everything together. You're going to need a soldering iron a drill, a Dremel, or something similar in order to be able to cut through the plastics. And finally, you're gonna need a Scion 2 printer or an alternative device you wish to convert to battery power. You're gonna need to start by taking your Scion 2 out of the printer. When we flip it over, you can see the head on the screw holding the battery door in place is gone. It, it's worn quite a bit. And try as I might, I cannot get it out. Looking at the other screw heads, it is very clear that these are extremely cheap screws. I'm going to attempt to put a flat slot in the head so I can remove the screw using the Dremel. Well that didn't work, which is annoying, so I'm going to have to drill the head out instead, which perhaps is what I should have done in the first place. Be very careful, of course, not to drill your fingers or damage the plastics. When we pop the back off the battery compartment, you can see there's actually quite a lot of space inside, which is going to make this conversion much easier. So far, this is my plan for fitting everything in neatly with the USB socket on the hidden side of the battery compartment underneath the printer, the DC to DC converter mounted centrally so I can easily connect it to the existing plus and minus terminals for the original battery, and the battery on the other side. I'm going to pop the push switch in this gap so it'll still be seated underneath, keeping it out of sight, but is relatively easy to get hold of. The push switch itself is going to sit between the DC to DC converter and the outputs from the charging circuit. And I've done this because the DC to DC converter has a constant power draw even when it's not in use. Although it's low, we don't want it running the battery flat when it's in storage. So by putting the push switch in, it allows us to stop that circuit being active. Meaning that the battery is ready for use whenever we're ready. First up, I'm going to solder the battery to the charging circuit and that way we can check the charging circuit is working before we go any further. Plug it in and there we have it, a charge light success. 
If you're enjoying this video, a like and subscribe would be excellent. I was hoping that I might reach 4,000 subs by the end of the year, but this looks increasingly unlikely as the year is coming to a close. However, if you've not subscribed, please do. And if you're really enjoying this video, or more importantly, enjoying this channel, you could consider becoming a member and directly supporting the channel. You will get access to the videos early. You will get a shout out on the channel itself. You get one of these nice stickers after any comment that you make and you get the warm fuzzy feeling knowing that you're supporting this channel directly. Next, let's solder in the DC to DC converter along with the switch. The original printer battery consisted of six AAA NICAD cells in series. This would generate a nominal voltage of 7.2 volts. So you might be asking yourself, why have I used a DC to DC converter instead of simply using two lithium ion batteries in series, given that a lithium ion battery's nominal voltage is 3.6, and so two of them would give us exactly 7.2. Point two. And of course, this is an option. However, as NICAD batteries only charge to a maximum voltage of 1.3 volts and sit at 1.2 for prolonged periods before a sudden drop off, this only gives a voltage variation between 7.8 and wherever the cutoff is for the printer stopping working. And of course, with a NICAD battery, you can run it completely flat and there's no issue with that. However, if we used a lithium ion battery, they actually charge up to 4.2 volts and they drain down to about three and anything below three can damage the cell itself and prevent it from continuing to charge. So there's a couple of issues here that I'd rather just avoid. The first is if I put 8.4 volts through this is it going to damage anything inside? And the second is if the cutoff for the working voltage on the printer is below 6 volts, then that will drain my batteries beyond where I want them to be. And that in turn will damage the cells and mean that they need replacing. So this mod won't last very long should that be the case. Instead, by using a DC to DC converter, regardless of the voltage that's input, within reason, then it's going to output the 7.1 or 7.2 volts that I'm going to set it to. And this means that we get a constant power for the printer, and it also means the lithium ion battery can't drain beyond the 3 volts I want because of the charge protection circuit on my charging board. Now that everything's soldered together, let's set the voltage on the DC to DC converter. I'm going to set it to around 7.1 volts, slightly below the nominal voltage, but well within tolerance for the machine itself. Now that's done, we need to start putting everything together. I'm going to use some masking tape over the plastic while I mark up the hole for the USB-C. Don't forget to allow for the depth of both the plastic and the foam pad that we're going to stick it to. Once you've marked it all up, drill a couple of holes making sure you use a drill bit just slightly smaller than the thickness of the USB-C socket. Next, connect the two holes using the disc cutter on the Dremel or something similar. And finally, just use a file to give it that little bit extra, tidy up the edge and create a snug fit. Next up, I'm going to use the disc cutter on the Dremel to cut two slits for the legs of the switch. Thanks to the break in the lower lip on the plastic, I only actually need to do this on the lid, which is jolly convenient. With the cutting and filing done, all we need to do is stick it all together. So I'm going to use double-sided foam pads to secure the DC to DC converter, the charging circuit, and of course the battery itself. I've done this rather than glue as I may want to upgrade the battery to a bigger battery in the future, given that this has a lower capacity than the original battery. With everything now in place, all I need to do is solder the battery terminals onto my output from the DC to DC converter. I needed to extend the negative terminal, however the positive was long enough, but these wires really just did not want to solder. Anyway, I got there in the end, and now the only thing left to do 
is to put the battery lid back on, turn it over and see if it works. And hey presto, we have life. Yes, the printer is working. So my Scion 2 printer worked perfectly with this modification and you wouldn't even know it was modified unless you flipped it over to the back where you'll see the switch and of course if you look on the side hidden there you can see the USB-C socket. I could have done a slightly neater job on that but I don't think it's bad overall and I'm very pleased with this modification. There are a couple of things I might do differently should I do it again. Number one, the push switch, which is absolutely necessary to stop battery drainage. I think I should have used an illuminated push switch or rocker switch in order that it would be easy to tell if the battery was on or off. And secondly, while you can just about see the LED indicator for the charge light through the gap at the edge of the socket or sometimes around the edge of the battery compartment itself, it might have been an idea to pop either a polycarbonate or a fiber optic tube so we could see it more easily or perhaps solder a new LED on. I'm sure you have some ideas as to how I could have done this better and if you do pop a comment below there is always room for improvement and you'll help anyone who's following up on this tutorial. A huge thanks to all my viewers, commenters, subscribers and of course a massive thanks to all the members who directly support this channel. I really appreciate all the interactions that we get and of course it helps the channel grow. If you've not subscribed, please make sure you do. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.